Hey everybody, it's Makeup Monday, and what I'm going to be doing today, we've done the mascara thing a million times, but these are some of my favorite hacks that I like to use when I'm doing weddings and proms and things like that, and, and a few new ones that I, I hadn't done before, so I thought I'd share them with you guys and see if this ups your mascara game just a little bit. Okay, so first of all, um, one of my new favorite things for people with really small, tiny bottom lashes is to use a brush. So this is an old lip brush that I've had forever. Put a little mascara on it. Now I don't have any mascara on my bottom lashes. It looks like I do because of the eyeshadow down there. But, and I don't particularly need this little hack, but it is a way to paint your lashes without getting that big fat wand down there for people that have small lashes and you end up with a big giant mess. So. This has been really, really a, a great hack for me, for um, my clients with really small bottom lashes to, um, to help with making a, mat, a mess. But it also allows you to get the mascara, you know, really, really into that root line. So if you've got small, itty bitty baby lashes on the bottom, go find you an old, you know, really skinny flat brush that you can paint those lashes with. And that has been one of my favorite new hacks that I had not done before. I have separate itty bitty wands just for the bottom lashes, but I really like this for getting those bottom lashes. Um, and you know, and okay, so that's for the bottom lashes. I don't use that on the top, but while you've got that brush out, if you really struggle with eyeliner, um, another hack is to take that and use that you know, as your liner. If you struggle with um, eyeliner that doesn't stay on you, which we already talked about that before with shadows for your liners, but, um, but for people that really want a waterproof liner, find you a waterproof mascara and use your brush to create a gel liquid liner um, with your brush and with your waterproof mascara. You can do it with regular mascara, but um, especially if you go out of town and you, you break your pencil, you lose your pencil, it runs out of ink when you roll it up. So this way you can just use your, um, your mascara and your brush to create that eyeliner. Hello, Monica. Um, okay, so that's a hack. Number two for me, something that's really important is that my mascara is always buildable. I've bought some of the trendy mascaras on the market and you get one good coat on and you cannot add more mascara to it. So for me, it's important that it's buildable and you've all seen me do this a million times, but to layer the powder on your lashes. Now, I tend to do mine first before mascara, but most of the makeup artists tend to put a coat of mascara on and then do another coat of um powder and then your mascara. I tend to do the powder first, so I don't think it matters really which way, but our mascara is extremely buildable. That means that I can put a coat on that morning, you know, run errands, I don't want a lot of junky, a ton of eyelashes, but then later in the day, if for some reason I do want to add my lashes, I can come in, and you guys remember the little hack about bending your lashes, and when there's a little product there, it's kind of like curling your hair and you just kind of wiggle and jiggle. And, um, and if you don't have, and you can see the drama that already a second coat gives me. So close on the wand, sit there a second. It takes just a little practice. You just gotta practice, but you'll figure it out. But if you don't have a buildable mascara, sometimes I'll do a makeover and you get a lot of product fallout on the lashes. So you wanna come back and add some more mascara and the mascara that they have on just won't allow me to do it. So I have to, um, I can't, you know, add more without removing what they had on. So I love that ours is completely buildable. Um, and you know, everything's still buy one, get one free for another week. And you can get one of each mascara. Our A-list mascara, which is for curling. And I posted a picture about 15 or 20 minutes ago about different applicators. So you'll see that this one has a slight curve to it. And that is for fitting the shape of the eye and curling and pushing up the, the lashes. And then this wand is gigantic, and that's for creating a lot of volume and a lot of, you know, drama on the lashes. So, um, during BOGO, you can get one of each. And what you would want to do is just put, you know, 
one, buy one, get one free of this mascara, and in the note section, you would just say, please substitute the intensity stretch for the A-list, so that way you can get one of each, because the computer doesn't have a way to mix these two up, but, um, but Orly's figured out a little back door for us, so we can get one of each. Okay, so mascara that's buildable, and using a tiny little applicator to get the smallest lashes, and also using that for eyeliner. Um, if you do get a mascara boo-boo, you know, you're putting on your lashes and you, you know, you get just a little, you know, dot of mascara like that on your face. The first thing we always want to do is go and grab it right away. Well, between the oils from our hands and the oil on our skin, you're just going to smear that and make a giant mess. As hard as it is, and I don't know why this is so hard, it's our nature to instantly want to repair and clean up and fix. And so what you want to do is let that completely dry. So I'll come back in a minute with a clean Q-tip and just swirl it and it will completely lift off my face without disturbing and creating um, a mess on my face. Um, now if your mascara gets a little old and dry, you know you shouldn't keep your mascara, but really three to four months, six months is definitely the limit, the absolute max. But if you're pushing that three month mark and you wanna get a little more life out of your mascara, put a few drops of Visine or saline solution for contacts, you know, down in there. And, you know, just kind of work it around and it'll thin the product out and make it where it's not gummy and clumpy anymore. So um, that's how you can get a little bit more life out of your mascara if it feels like it's kind of dried out. Um, let's see, and, and really just toss it and another thing is you can put your mascara in a thing of hot water in the mornings. Just run the hot water um, in the sink over it. And that'll also loosen up some mascara on the side so you can get in there and, and get a little bit of mascara out of your tube. So let's see. Um, and for those of you that want to wear waterproof, I did this this weekend. You know, put a coat of your regular mascara on and then let it set up. And I bought some mascara the other day that's waterproof. This stuff is Awful. It's Lash Blast. We don't have a waterproof, and I just picked this up in the store. It is fat. It is goopy. It is a complete mess, um, but I got it, and it'll last me the summer. So what you want to do is put a coat of your favorite mascara on first, and then let it set up and dry, and then come back with your waterproof and go over it. And the reason you want to do that, and for some people that really have super straight lashes, and they have a hard time with their lashes going flat or holding a curl, then um, sometimes you want to top your mascara with waterproof because it'll hold that curl up a little bit better. But if you're wanting to go swimming, you know, you're going to a wedding and you don't want to have to fool with trying to get the waterproof off, the, the key is to put regular mascara on underneath first and then top it with your waterproof. Now, if you do have a favorite mascara from somebody that's not Alouette, um, and it's gummy and, and, you know, just full of goop like that. You know, you want to take a tissue and kind of clean some of that. Look at that. Just barely touched it. Extra goop off. So you do get a cleaner one. But one of my favorite things to do is to take, um, you, you buy a package of these from Sally's. And they're just nylon wands. I love nylon bristles for cleaning up my lashes. So you can come back in and just come through and comb out you know, any clumps that you might have in your mascara. And I love this little ball because if you do get a really bad clump, you can kind of twirl it in there and it'll grab and it'll smooth out any clumps that you might have. And this is also another little applicator that's good for those tiny bottom lashes if you don't want to use a brush. And I get a whole package of these for Sal at Sally's, like four bucks, and they last me a year. They last forever. Um, and you can also save your old mascaras and clean them off really good, you know, wash them, clean them, and then use a clean mascara wand to clean up your lashes and straighten them out. You know, don't do the old thing with pins and bobby pins and, you know, just use mascara wands, clean spoolies um, to clean your lashes up. Let's see. And then removing. I love watching people when they come to my office take their makeup off and you know, they're real careful to not get disturb their eyes with their cleanser, and then they come back with a makeup remover. And what I find works the best for me is to wash my entire face with my cleanser. My cleanser of choice is our platinum cleanser, peppermint, lactic acid. 
it gets off about 99% of my makeup, even the heavy eye makeup that I wear. But there's always that little raccoon left over. And then I'll take our essential cleansing oil, which has seven essential oils in it. It is like a treatment for your eyelashes. You can use it in your hair, on your cuticles, your feet, your skin. You can massage it into your face if you feel really dry and like you need a little, you know, oil in your skin. But, um, but wash my face first, and then I'll use my cleansing oil just for the residue of what's left over. Some people prefer to use their makeup remover only on their eyes first and then wash. There's really no right or wrong way, but I feel like the cleanser gets off so much of my makeup that a bottle of cleansing oil is lasting me like a year because I don't need very much of it. I'm only working it on that, the raccoon eye that's left over. Okay, see that little spot right there? You just take this and it literally just picks it up. It flakes right off your face and you don't disturb your makeup. The oils in your hand and then the oils in your makeup just smear it and make a mess. So just be patient, let it dry, and then just, you know, twirl it and the mess comes right up. Um, and then also, you know, do coat the top. I don't really coat the top of my lashes because I have a lot of eyelashes and they get a little too Tammy Faye Baker on me if I do that. But if you don't have really good top lashes, you know, then you'll want to also coat the tops of your lashes and then make sure you don't forget to push them back up. Now, a really cool trick that I've been using my whole life um, when I'm doing makeup on other people, and this is great to do on yourself if you struggle with this, is to take a spoon. You know, if you don't want to use a small applicator or the brush trick, you know, you can put this under here and literally you just go to town. And then you can be as messy as you want. And then when you move it, the mascara is on here. Same thing from the top. You can put it behind your lashes and really, because I'm trying to teach people how to push their lashes up and close on the wand and they end up with you know, a lot of lashes, a lot of mascara here. Well, this way it ends up on the back of the spoon instead of on the back of your eye. So that's a fun little tip for, um, especially when I'm doing other people. I, I don't have the problem when I'm doing myself, but if you do really struggle with getting mascara up here or underneath, just an old plastic spoon will really save the day and fix that for you. And you won't have that problem anymore. Um, and you know, don't forget about the tight lining that we discussed with eyeliners because that really makes your lashes look lush and full. And I really like my lashes to fan and to curl up, so I like a good curling mascara. This is a curling. The A-List is a nice curling mascara, and the Intensity Stretch is for drama and length. Most of the time I just use my A-List, I get enough out of that. But sometimes if I want a little extra something late in the day, we're going out and I want to pop them up a little bit, I'll throw it on a coat of my intensity. Because remember, these mascaras are buildable, so I'm not locked into the mascara that I put on that morning. Um, so those are just a few of my fun little hacks that I like to, you know, to, to work with my mascara. Because mascara is the number one beauty product. That is the most purchased beauty product. It's like coffee for your eyes, it opens your eyes, it wakes you up. So if you put nothing else on, even when I run to the gym, I won't put anything on but maybe a little CC cream right here because I'm a little dry and I'll just put that on. But I always put a little bit of mascara on the top lashes, um, even if I don't put it all the way on because it just, it wakes me up and it makes me look, you know, like I'm dressed and I'm ready to go face the day. So if you've got a really cool mas mascara hack or a tip that I didn't mention, put it in the comments. I'd love to learn something new today. Um, you know, my newest little hack for me was using the small wand down there because that's not something I've done before. And it works like a charm on tiny, tiny little, little blonde lashes. So um, please comment if you have any hacks that we can all share. And... Um, and, you know, Beauty Club is coming up next week. We've got a week left of BOGO, so um, everybody be getting ready for Beauty Club and a few other announcements you'll see later in the week, over the weekend. So everybody have a great week, and I will see you soon. Bye.